Greetings, hi, hello, happy holidays. It's Culture Club time. We have sent you the veriest, merriest kit to keep you happy, cozy, and from murdering your family and in-laws. Uh, to do that, we sent you our favorite coziest thing. So let's dive straight into my one true love, all things cheese. Uh, please meet Grote Caputo. If you haven't met this cheese before, shame on you. This is our very first cheese that we had a roaring amount of success with in our cheese case at our downtown location. This starts as a as an Asiago base from Wisconsin that gets anaerobically aged in Cheese Cave 2 for about 16 months, ideally more if you get an old boy. Happy New Year to you. Uh, as this cheese ages, it starts to develop crystallization structures throughout the interior of the paste. So you bite into it and you get this really dense kind of sweet, nutty, almost flaky, cakey paste that will crumble really, really easily. But on those little breaks, you'll get some really nice crystal and crunchy bits. Those are the crystallization structures starting and you get this very joyous texture that feels light and airy, but also floral and deep and really savory and a sweet finish. And it is the cheese that I would always recommend to people who are looking to create a cheese board for the holidays and they don't know if their guests are gonna be cheese nerds, new to fine cheese. If you are looking to satisfy a variety of palates, this is the guy. He will make everyone happy, you will run out of it, you will be sad, and then you will need more. And for that, we're not sorry. So keep this in mind for your cheese boards. It is a really fantastic cheese to grate over roasted vegetables. If you're looking to add a bit of sweet nuttiness to a really savory roasted vegetable dish, this is your guy. So keep that in mind. And if you're going for dessert, this pairs perfectly with chocolate. So it's gonna have a lot of uses. You'll find many, many ways to consume it. Cheers. Next cheese, Soto Cenere al Tartufo from the Veneto. This is a cow's milk cheese that gets packed with vegetable ash. This is comprised of a bunch of allium. So think garlic, leeks, onions, scallions, scapes, anything like that. Uh, burnt to a crisp, further burnt into ash, and then slapped on the side of this cheese. We've been putting ash on cheese for centuries. It started in the Loire Valley to maintain the pH balance of Loire Valley goat's milk cheeses. But it also inhibits the growth of mold and helps retain a bit of moisture. So when you bite into this guy, you get this very fudgy, very satisfying, very luxe, rich paste that feels a bit fudgier. And within this paste are little tiny bits of then freshly grated black truffle. If you're not familiar with black truffles, they're a spore. They grow at the base of oak trees. We love them for their aromatic experience. People have a hard time describing them because there are so many chemical compounds in truffles that relate to other foods that you will find your own little journey in this cheese. So if you are looking to really ring in the new year, this loves sparkling wine more than I do. So please have this with some bubbles. It doesn't matter when you do it. If you get through next Tuesday and you feel like you need to celebrate, this one. If you need to really zhuzh up your New Year celebrations, this one. If you want to make a really amazing grown-up grilled cheese, also this one. So keep that in mind. You can eat the rind if you want to. That's perfectly fine. If you decide to, I'd like to challenge you to recall the last time you ever found yourself craving a bite of ash. If that's in your daily diet, we need to talk. But the rest of it, please enjoy. Let's have some meat stuff. This is Speck from Alto Adige. If you are a fan of shiny meats, this is your guy. I like to think of this as wintertime prosciutto because it is a prosciutto, but it's got a little bit more going on. Speck is the same cut as your classic prosciutti, hind leg, but instead of being deboned and re-rolled to look like a leg, which is kind of weird, I don't know why we do that, it stays flat, gets pressed, brined with salt, juniper, bay leaves, a little bit of thyme, and then, hung to air cure and cold smoked for months after that to create your classic prosciutto texture and experience, but with a lot more savory, smoky, umami experience within that. It is not liquid smoke, painfully smoked. It is like a true whisper of smoke, and that's why I love it. So when you are doing things that call for prosciutto, consider using speck instead. You can bake it into like a prosciutto chip. I would call it the 
I don't know, prod a bag of bacon bits. It's a really, really special way to add crunch. But if you're also considering rendering fat for something, if you want some sort of piggy porky goodness in your Brussels sprouts, if you want to wrap it around pears and roast them and then drizzle it with honey and nuts and call yourself a chef, God bless you. Go on that journey, but do it with speck. I, this is a small taste and I want you to enjoy it immediately because it's gonna be sliced so thinly, enjoy it. But if you find yourself inspired, get more. We'll have it forever. There will never be a day that Kudos does not have a speck or I will riot. Okay, that is your speck. Let's now have your fishy boys. This is from Jose Gourmet in Portugal, but I'm going to use it for my sad girl feast of seven fishes on Christmas Eve. Uh, the Feast of Seven Fishes is an Italian-American tradition where families will make seven dishes of all seafood because in Roman Catholic culture, you can't have pork or beef on Christmas Eve. Catholicism. But you can have stuff like this, and that's what makes it fun. So these are stuffed calamari and a tomato ragu that, truthfully, I'm going to eat straight out of the can. I might heat it up. I might not. No one's the boss of me on Christmas Eve because it's the one time that I am alone and I get to have something to myself before I get to join my family. So what I will be doing is eating seven tins of fish. This one is a tiny smoked, no, I'm sorry, not smoked. It is a tiny calamari stuffed with rice and then in a ragu sauce. They're kind of cut at the center so you can pull them out. You can gently heat this whole tin. You can take it out. You can put it over rice or couscous or even mix it into something like a risotto. So if you want to get fancy with your Feast of Seven Fishes, bless you. If you don't and you want to join me, let's send each other pics. We'll text all night. It'll be really fun. I, this is, I think, one of the first tins from Jose Gourmet that really turned all of us into a tiny Jose cult. Uh, it is rich. It is balanced. It doesn't feel like something that any of us expected to ever come out of a tin. And now we are so indoctrinated in said cult that we will put anything in our mouths, but this is the one that made it feel truly special. So now I get to share that with you. I hope you love it. Moving on to the sweet stuff, the sweeter side of life. Um, you know what? Let's have a drink first. Let's have your phony Negroni. These are from our friends at St. Agresti's in New York, and it is exactly what it says it is. It's a Negroni without alcohol. So if you were really trying to keep it together and one more sip of booze would start a family fight, have this instead. But if you're not drinking, if you're just looking for something else, if you want people to feel included that aren't imbibing this holiday season, or if you just want something to drink, this will do it for you. You get that kind of juniper experience. You get the bitterness that you would expect in something like Campari or Capoletti or Aperol and a little bit of effervescence. So if you would like to keep making Spagliato jokes, here you go. Uh, it is that perfect bitter experience. It's going to feel like a really welcome gift after a really giant meal because these types of bitter bevies will help settle your stomach. So have one during, have one after, top it with Prosecco, or put it in your cranberry sauce, because I know a lot of you are going to be making cranberry things, and this with cranberries are best friends. Don't tell them what I told you, and you can keep it a secret, and it can be your secret recipe from now on. I feel better already. Okay, now the sweet stuff. Panettone and drinking chocolate. If I were you and if you were me, we'd be having these together, giggling around a fire and roasting chestnuts, all cute and cozy and whatever. Uh, Drinking chocolate is the thing that got us through 2020 and then we couldn't quit it and now we are just drinking chocolate fiends and panettone is the thing that I look forward to every year. I buy 12 and I keep them all year. I have one a month and that's why I'm not in therapy anymore. Uh, let's start with this guy. Ritual is our Park City local craft chocolate maker. They've taken their phenomenal kind of darling of the chocolate world dark chocolates, shredded them, and turned them into a drinking chocolate. So this gets whisked with warm milk or your favorite milk alternative or even with a soy or I've done it with water and it's still been really great. You need some sort of warm liquid to whisk this into. You're going to create this really delicious emulsion because it's from shredded chocolate. You get to retain all of the cocoa butter and you get a much thicker, deeper experience. And this is going to do just that for you. So you can do this plain with whatever liquid you choose. You can add spices. You can add 
booze. You can add flavorings. You get to be really, really creative with this, but it's going to create that Huga that we know and love and are kind of trying to recreate at all times. So we love you, Ritual. Thank you for keeping me sane. Finally, not finally, we have two more things. Panettone. I, I grew up loving panettone and then all my friends in kindergarten and first grade said that fruitcake was terrible and I thought they were the same thing and I had to abandon my one true love. And then I realized that fruitcake tastes like dookie and panettone is what is actually the thing that it's trying to recreate. This is a traditional recipe from Milan. However, this one is from Sicily and uses Sicilian fruit and that brings me happiness. Uh, you get a really lovely, very airy, bubbly style of cake from 36 hours of fermentation, but it is also loaded with really delicious plump raisins, really phenomenal candied citrus peel, and it feels like the thing that you need on Christmas night after you've made your Christmas Eve meal, after you've cooked for everybody on Christmas morning and made Christmas Eve dinner, you don't need to make dessert, you have this. Top it with a little bit of sweetened mascarpone and call it a day, you can make it into French toast, toast in the morning. Don't tell Matt Caputo I said that because he gets mad every time I do it, he's a purist. I am, I don't follow any rules, I have no gods. But I want you to enjoy this. I think it is a really, really delicious way to get back to loving panettone because it is what it was meant to be. It follows a very traditional recipe and it is not the fruitcake or the little $2.99 panettone in the grocery store that will hurt your feelings and make you sad. This will make you glad and I will celebrate it with you. So hold on to this guy. Finally, finally, a Guido Gobino Cremino. This is a kind of modern reinterpretation of a centuries old confection um, called Gianduia from Torino. It is the original collision of cacao and hazelnuts but it gets a little bit of an extra zhuzh. Uh, this is that recipe, primarily hazelnuts, some milk powder, some sugar, and some cocoa powder, but it also has some candied crunchy bits of hazelnut for crunch, some olive oil to lower the melting point and help it melt a bit more sexily across your palate, and some sea salt because joy. So you get that juxtaposition of salty and sweet. It is the treat of all treats, and this will be at the base of all of the stockings that I fill this season, but it'll also be in tiny bowls all over my house so that people feel welcome and have a snack when they need a break. I, I have so much more to say about this, and if you'd like to learn more about things like this, you could gift our tour of Italy class to your friends. It's online or in person, and I will tell you all of the wild stuff on how this was born and how it was created. So, um, gift them, gift a class, enjoy them yourselves, and don't tell anybody. You don't have to share. I'm not your mom. It's totally up to you, but this is how I will be ending my nights, maybe with a little nip of a phony groni or a whiskey, depending on how my day went. Uh, enjoy everything. This is your kit for the holiday season. I hope it is merry, I hope it is warm, I hope it is full of love and happiness, and I hope it is full of cheese and treats and all the things that we hold so dear. Enjoy, tell us what you think, we love you a lot.